Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So we've talked about encodings. Now let's talk about some problems for DFAs. So we're going to talk about one particular problem today, which is going to be called A sub DFA. And what this refers to, the A here stands for the acceptance problem. And uh, we know what DFA stands for. So what is this? This is going to be a language. So it's just like any other language, like Sigma star or whatever. But it's going to encode various things. So it's going to be all the strings that are encodings of two things, which are a DFA along with an input string. That last angle bracket wasn't very good. And what are we going to, uh, it can't just be any combination of a DFA and a string. We require that, well, the first thing be a DFA. So M is a DFA. And we require that W is in the language of that machine. Notice I don't put angle brackets on this because I'm talking about the actual machine here. But here, in order to actually put it in the language, I, I require it to be an actual string. So that's why we do the encoding here. Okay, so this is asking, if I provide to you in some form, and we agree on to how I provide it to you, but as long as you can figure out what the DFA is in the input string, I'm asking you to figure out uh, whether or not this machine accepts this string or not. And, and that's, that's the whole um, that's the whole language. And what I want to convince you of is that this language is decidable. This language is decidable. And if you don't remember what decidable means, this means that there is a Turing machine that always halts with this language. Okay. So if I can make a Turing machine that has exactly the language A sub DFA, and I can show that it runs in a finite amount of time, it never runs forever, then A sub DFA is in fact decidable. All right, so how would we actually show this? Well, the simple answer is I can just simulate the DFA for, uh, for each of the characters in W, and then we're done. So if we think about it, what do we actually need to do? So let's just say we have this encoding, although it could be a totally different encoding, but uh, this is a, let's just say we agreed to this one. So let's say that I put the pound signs such that I have states, then input characters, then the transition function, then start state, then final states, and then I put w1 through wn over here. And there was an issue that we had to resolve last time where we had to convert everything into zeros and ones, but let's just assume that we uh, handled all that. Well, how do we figure out if this thing is uh, accepted by this thing? Well, what we need to do is keep track of what character we're currently looking at and what current state we're in. So what I'm going to suggest is that we put over here, right there, we put the current state that we are in. So let's just say that it was like Q sub 7, for example. Then that means that in order to figure out what character I need to look at next, I need to look at the current input character I'm going to look at, and we'll see how to fix that, and what state I'm in. Then zoom over to here, look at the uh, transition function, just see what does the transition function say to do, first of all, and then what it says to do, then whatever state is the third one in the triplet, which is um, the state that you're in, the symbol that you're reading, and the one you're going to on, the tr on that transition, whatever that third one is, I'm going to update this guy over here to be that uh, particular uh, state. All right, so how do we fix the problem of, uh, how do I know what character I'm looking at on the input right here? Well, there are several ways we can do it. Well, because this thing's a DFA, once I read a character, I'm never going to use it again. So what we can do is once I, let's say that we're looking at W1 right here, 
then what we can do is we can shift everything after it left one position and delete this character. That's one way to go. Another way you can go is we can do the dotting business that we did when we talked about multi-tape Turing machines um, and trying to simulate it with one tape. And the way that you accomplish this is that you, for each of the possible input characters, you will add a second one uh, for, the, for the tape, not for the input, but for the tape that corresponds to the dotted version of it. And you can deal with it that way. And then, and then once you uh, figure out what transition to do, you move this guy over one uh, position. And if you uh, run into the pound sign, then you know that you're done. And in the other case, uh, if, there was, if you have two pound signs in a row, then you're already done. All right, so what do we actually do here? Well, once we have read, once we have read the whole thing, so once all of W is read, then we just check if this state is in F, okay? So if this state, wherever we ended up, is in F right here, then we know we have accepted the, uh, the input or the DFA accepts that input. And so we can immediately go to uh, Q accept. So here, if, so if so, go to Q accept. And if not, then we definitely did not accept the input. So then we go to uh, Q reject. And you can argue that this machine runs in a finite amount of time because we are always consuming one character of this finite length input right here. And, and therefore, since there's only a finite number of characters in here, that part takes finite time. Uh, we have to zoom back and forth across this big input, but I argue that that runs in a finite amount of time too because uh, this whole thing is finite and we only have a finite number of characters to do it for. And there are only a finite number of other operations we need to do, like checking if it is an F and whatnot. So I argue that it actually is uh, a machine that always halts, and then therefore A sub DFA is decidable. But I'm gonna show you a different, uh, an, well actually one more thing I should show, uh, tell you first. We need to also verify that this really is a DFA. So first, uh, we need to verify that I'm going to be more general and say that the input is properly encoded. Okay, so if it really is a DFA with an input string, because I could theoretically give you a garbage input if I wanted to, but I want to give you, uh, you want to check that it's properly encoded first before you actually do all this stuff and figure out, oh, it's not a DFA. So check if it's encoded first and then uh, go in. I argue that this runs in a finite amount of time too because uh, all that you need to do is for each of the things in this first block and uh, paired with this thing in this block, there's exactly one thing in this block corresponding to going to another state. There's one thing in this block and this could be theoretically anything. Uh, this could be any length string with no pound signs in between. Um, yeah, so you, you in this particular case, if we had this encoding, we would say that there are three, four, five, six, there would be seven pound signs, for example. Um, so this Q7 is not part of the input, so we should have that last pound sign being the last character. So there are some details to work out, but I argue that we can definitely do this. One more thing that I'm gonna show here is something called a high level description which is getting rid of all the details. So here we're going to remove, in some sense, the details of the Turing machine itself. And you think, that's crazy. Why would you want to do that? The answer is that it gets really complicated if you have to worry about all the little details here. So if you just think about this at a high level, then uh, you can convert it into a Turing machine pretty easily each of the steps in turn. It's just you want to get the high level idea across and then if you wanted to, you can convert it into a Turing machine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give a high level description. 
So the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to write something like this, which starts off on input, then the string that we want, and we need to actually check that it really is a, a DFA in a Turing machine. So where M is a DFA and W is a string. I can't say W is in the language of M here because that's the problem we're trying to solve anyway. So what do we do here? We uh, simulate uh, M on W. So I, I assume that there's a procedure like the one we just described that simulates a DFA on uh, input uh, on some input. And then what we do after that is we check if the resulting state is a final state in that uh, DFA, in the original DFA. And then once we do that, we say, if so, we're going to just say the word accept and nothing else, which means we immediately go to the accept state if we wanted to think about the details. And then otherwise, reject. I think this is a little easier to worry about because you don't have to worry about like how the tape head moves and like how the things are laid out on the tape. We don't really care about the details. We can always worry about that later if we wanted to make this more specific and formal. But here we're just saying run the DFA on input W. There's a procedure that does that like the one we just described. Uh, and then we just check if the resulting state, which is the state that we're keeping track of, is a final state in that machine, and if so, we accept, otherwise we don't. All right, so that is showing that A sub DFA is decidable. All of these steps run in a finite amount of time, by the way, because they're the same as the ones we argued before ran in a finite amount of time. Uh, leave any questions or comments about ACE of DFA into the comments down below. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. I'm currently doing one-on-one -on -one tutoring, so my email is in the video description if you want to schedule for that. And as always, I'll see you next time.